morning. Oh, God. Oh, God. Um, Good morning, morning everyone. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we, we are both, we're going to be honest with you. We are both not happy in ourselves today. Mm. We, our bodies just feel... Heads as well, really my head. Can we yeah. Put, can we do something about and that? I do a lot of work on just like, in a lot, most days I'm like good and I'm positive. But today, everything about myself, I'm just like, I don't feel like I'm in my own body. I feel really unattractive. I just feel no, I don't look weird. It. I mean, I feel exactly the same. I hate everything about it. I want to punch myself repeatedly in the I face. I wonder if we did this. Uh, well, God, that you see a lot of shit. Why don't you get the kickers box over there? We've got some kick- kickers. Why don't we do that? That might make us feel. Oh God, I really fancy us. a tango now. I've I think seen there them in needs the to be less of us. Oh, less of us. That's better. I can do that. I didn't want my boobs in, Mark. I How just about? look. No, not like that. I mean, let's just get our heads Pull back a bit. There we go. Yeah. Oh. We're not particularly happy with our heads either, but... I don't want, don't want my head. That's what Anyway, I enough about that. We're going to be talking a bit later, actually, about... <laughs> what? Eating, oh, eating, eating disorders. disorders in your 40s. I feel like I need a stepladder now. This is really weird. I feel like I'm looking up like that. <laughs> Much um, better. Hi, Janine Amory. Congratulations, 18 months member. 24 months, you get your card. Um, all cards have gone out. If you haven't had received a card, you need to contact Michelle. Literally, all cards we have are gone up to out. Date. out. <laughs> Long last. Jill Taylor, quite sub. Good morning, my darling. Um, what are we going to be talking about? We're going to be talking about discovering that you're a binge eater in your 40s. Um, schools that snoop on parents that take their kids out of school. Fern Britain has no positive feelings about Philip Schofield, no love lost there. Uh, we're going to touch upon um, the less obviously newsworthy, clearly, because it's never, I can't see it anywhere, uh, news of the slow uh, destruction of the Palestinians through the lack of aid, humanitarian aid being allowed into Gaza. Um, I, I want to talk slow about Slow starvation yeah. of a people. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, you know, and that's not to make light of it, of course, we've talked at great length, but it, it's weird because the news flow around that, you know, it's really difficult. It's really difficult. You just wouldn't even know. Yeah. Um, so, binge eater, that's me, says Ross. Okay, well, we'll get onto that in a sec. But first of all, uh, for those of you who are across Nadia's um, Instagram and generally across everything that we do, you'll know that, you know, it's been a really difficult week for, for, for Hannah, one of Nadia's friends. You want to explain? Um, I just want to say. No, you been, explain. Well, I just, I just, just want to explain. This is this is obviously uh, Hannah, who has the news landed this week that a crucial drug um, that would have allowed her and uh, numerous other women uh, to have sort of life prolonging treatment for years, two years yeah. potentially, has, so has myself... not has not been sanctioned or, or picked up by NHS England. So I, I've got myself back together now. Thank okay. you. <laughs> because yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to say. So yes, this drug in her too. I spoke to you about it yesterday. And first of all, I want to say a massive thank you because yesterday, just in one day, the petition that Breast Cancer Now has got up and running um, received 65,000 signatures we heard this morning. Now, I didn't realise this, but 100,000 signatures means Parliament has to discuss it. Right, This, these are people with secondary breast cancer. Mm. So for my friend Hannah, it's breast. She has breast cancer in her liver. She has it in her lungs. She's she's a mum of a of a three year old. Uh, As she said yesterday, I have so much to live to live for, and this drug could help her live longer. Right, that's what it can do. So it is, and so if we take her as the case study and then we think of the thousands of other women that day before yesterday were told by NHS England. Sorry, no, nah, I'm not going to let you have it. This is a proven drug, this game-changing drug, available in 45 other countries. If you're in Scotland today, I am so happy for anyone that lives in Scotland with secondary breast cancer because it is available to them. Can I just talk So if Mark has put the, the uh, link, link is beneath up, here. please, please, it takes 10 seconds. Yeah. Imagine being a part of something that shifts the dial on this and makes this available, not just for the women and and men today, but for the future. Any of us and all of us will be touched in some way by breast cancer, whether it's ourselves or whether it's our family or our friends. It's really important that England and Wales have the same chance here as they do in Scotland, 45 Have they given a reason as to why they haven't gone with it? 
they but is there, I mean, they, have they been asked the question, why not? Well, I don't know how much I can say about that because I do know some stuff, but I don't know whether I'm allowed to say it yet. But but make no bones about it, NHS England blocked it. And and the drug company cannot believe it. Ah. Oh. Because sides are blaming it. Well, I mean, one can only ever... I suppose my question on this, which I don't understand, is as I, am I right in understanding, correct me, other people here say that they have relatives who... Uh, receive the drug in other parts of the world, also in Scotland. And from the kind of the conversations that I've been privy to and had with you and and, and, and I've seen between you and, and Hannah and friends, am I right in thinking that the the total number of people that this would be used on doesn't amount to a huge number of people, well, does yeah, it? Well, I don't know the actual number, so we're not talking no. about vast No, no, but that's my point. Money. It's not like we're looking at a massive It's not paycheck. like millions and millions of people will want this drug. But even so, right. you know... I just think women, I think people, I must say people because there are men with breast cancer, are just left behind with secondary breast cancer. They're just not considered. A, a young friend of mine who had been, who had a very difficult mastectomy, and she's a young, she's, you know, she's got a young husband, they've got his children. She, she you know, she, she really wanted a new breast. Mm. They wouldn't let her have it because mm. they're saying, because they think, well, you know, it's secondary. It's like, it's mm. brutal, brutal. Mm. Um, yeah, so actually it was. So the game-changing treatment da, 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 has been blocked for approval. That is it. Uh, NICE and NH England have rejected Enhertu's deal, which apparently is an astonishing deal, Enhertu have said. I think we should all ask NHS England for an exact explanation as to why. Well, that's why we want to get into Parliament. Yeah, yeah. I we want to, we're going to yeah, start knocking yeah. doors down because we haven't got time. This The clock is ticking. Yeah. Okay. Ellen says here it will be cost, Mark, and whether they think a life is worth extending harsh when they're spent. God knows how much on wars and vaccines. Thank no you. one wants. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Um, absolutely disgusting. Says Lee Thank Darren. you. Just... Please click on that link. Please share it with your <sighs> friends. You can choose the treatment. Please, right. please, please. You can go to Breast Cancer Now and share mm. their story. Please. You'll be a part of something. Now, I do have available, um, and I will play it right at the end, Nadia's Instagram post, uh, which includes Hannah's um, message. So I'll be playing that at the end. We'll be prepared. It'll to, break your heart. It, it will, yeah. Okay, so what are we looking at today? Let's talk about binge eating in your 40s. This is an article. Uh, in... By Bryony e. Gordon, who I really, really like. Okay. I really like Bryony e. Gordon. All right. She, um, she's, she's done a lot for, for mental health. Yeah. She um, what is, has been very open about her alcoholism, her um, cocaine addiction. Um, and I, I, she's been sober for a while now. She's written some really good books. She's funny. She's smart. She's just, yeah, I, I'd like to be her friend. Mm. She's that sort of a bird. Mm. She had bulimia when she was um, younger. Right. And then um, she she talks about during the pandemic, she sort of slipped into this way of eating. She actually talks about how sometimes after she'd eaten, she would go into almost a sort of like a blackout, not complete blackout, almost like when she was drinking. Now, I have to say, as I was reading this article, I was like, literally, I was just clapping as I was going through each bit. Because, you know, Mark, I've spoken about this for so many years, mm -hmm. like for years on Loose Women. And on, oh, do you mind just moving that because I've got it here? So I don't know why it's a bit distracting. I feel like we've lost them. <laughs> Take any second. Do Thank you. Because I've got it here. Um, I, um, and for years I've spoken about this, about emotional eating, binge eating disorder. Now, when she talks about it, in this article, she actually said, I had an eating disorder, I didn't even know I had it. So she was eating to the point where she was almost passing out, numbing out with, mm. with food. Mm. And then she was writing her next book, and um, this, this um, psych psychotherapist or psychiatrist specialist in eating disorders said to her will you please please include um bed because she said um it's the most common eating disorder and yet precious little is ever heard about there is such shame attached to obesity in our culture it's often seen as a moral failing rather than a mount mental illness now Mental illness, so we go, oh, God, you know, I haven't got a mental illness. It sounds very harsh, doesn't it? And, and we don't want to say we've got a mental illness. I like to think of it as a struggle, as a struggle, mm. right? So so 
why I'm so happy that she's talking about this is, is because, and she actually says, you know, she said, when you really look into it, she goes, I think it's a flaming miracle, women that do, that stay slim. When you think mm. about the diet culture and how endemic it is in, in, in everything that we do, right from when we're tiny, everything, diet culture, diet culture. Now, if you're struggling in any way with your emotions or your self-esteem, there are lots of different ways that people might medicate that, right? It could be alcohol, it could be whatever. I've been banging on about this forever, forever. Nobody would accept that people also do it with food. They use food as a medication. They use it to numb their feelings. We've done it, Mark does it. We 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 massive numbers with food, weren't we, for, for for a very long time, and um, it needs to be spoken about more. And she's right; there is so much shame attached to being, you know, not the size you're supposed to be that people aren't getting the help that they need. Uh, it's interesting that this 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 article has popped up at the moment. I think I'm probably at the lowest point I've been in a long time in the last year regarding my own sort of body image and physicality I feel it's probably come off the bat that I haven't been well and I haven't been able to do exercise and I go into that kind of poisonous thinking but um I mean you know binge I I, I literally like last night I was out I, I, I was I was it was like Where trying to it was like trying to no it wasn't what I was out. I was it was like you know why it, it was like uh, I was trying to steer a fast moving out of control vehicle from the central reservation last night my not using food to fix uh, a feeling and um uh, and because and the only reason i managed to kind of avert a catastrophe food wise was because um i just you know despite all of my efforts to get fit to da, 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 i am feeling disgusting i mean disgusting i mean truly mm -hmm. disgusting and it's really really getting to me actually at the moment and so when so when I read this, sorry, I just, so when I read this, uh, I was just like, wow, you know, I, all I can do at the moment is try and employ everything in my power to 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 do what I used to do at the very beginning of not drinking, which is just steadfastly. When I came, I got in really late last night. I I I, I, I was prowling. I was looking for stuff. I was thinking if I eat cheese, it's a protein and it won't be so bad, and that's all right. I feel I, I just feel absolutely hideous. And it's really, really crippling me at the moment. So hearing this and then being reminded, as you rightly say, that there, it's, still, it's still a struggle to get so many people on board with this as a sort of mental health because illness is, people, is because quite of something. Their disgust. And I want to say something on what you've just said there. But she said, I've learned that if you look at BED as a weight issue, you won't recover. This is the bit I love. It's a soul issue. And that's why mm. thinking about the way we eat, dieting, all of this, it doesn't work. It just doesn't work because, you know, it's like I would say, I dieted my way to obesity. I went on one diet, came off it, I lost weight, and then I put some on and a bit more. And But it wasn't until I started looking at the emotions, at the soul, at the reason why I was medicating mm. with food um, that, I, that things started to change for me. And she says, our society's obsession with appearance keeps people in disordered eating patterns and shame, which makes me so sad it doesn't have to be this way. And, yeah. and this one, last line, she says, today I see food as a nourishment. That's what I always say, isn't it? How am I nourishing my body? And then not to punish. Now, what Mark just said there literally broke my heart. So that's why I sort of moved forward. And then so I could rewind back. Because this is that, what Mark just said there was incredibly brave. And I'm really proud of you for saying it, <laughs> right? Because that will chime for so many people, okay? But let me just finish one thing. Sorry. What really interests me about this is you've, and I'm not going to reveal anything, you've been doing some amazing work on yourself with your therapist. Amazing. And I've seen some huge shifts, mm. right? Mm. So some of the anxious thinking and the repetitive negative thinking has gone and we so often when that happens, I think we go back to a safe place of like, this is a familiar self-loathing thing. And it kind of like feeds a kind of familiar anxiety. Do you know what I mean? It can become so addictive, this self-loathing and and then comforting and fighting it. And, and because it's not spoken about and because 
you know, like she says here, I wasn't throwing up, I wasn't starving myself, so then it wasn't a problem. But the amount of sadness and unhappiness it can be, it can bring. Well, I just is real. I just found my. I, I just realised that I, I, I had the extent to which um, one's navigating this kind of unspoken about hurdle or shadow mm. or or cumbersome landscape, and you're thinking, well, hang on a minute, why am I, what am I grappling over here? And I, now, look, I, I'm long enough in the tooth with my mental health to know that a huge part of this is, is coming out of feeling unwell, and it impacts on your ability to kind of addictively stick to the bits that make you feel better, even if they're not necessarily always the right things, you know, you know, slavishly doing runs and all that kind of stuff. So, so I know that that's part of it, and I know it's a kind of, a, it's a state of mind rather than a statement of fact. But... The one thing that happened to me last night, which was really strange, was for the first, I think what one does with something like food, I don't know if you find this, guys, anyone who struggles with binge eating or, and obviously you've gone through all sorts of stuff like this. It's a constant act of avoiding looking at it, I find. It's really weird. Mm, mm. I, and, and unlike with, like, with alcohol, I looked at it. I looked it. at it and I stopped it. But I constantly navigate round the edges of every packet of everything that I may find short-term comfort from. So I came in last night and I looked for the jar Nutella. of Nutella. Not, <laughs> no, 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 not to have any. I went to the jar to make sure I hadn't had any. And that wow. really alarmed me. That, that's, that's so good because that really illustrates to people that don't understand that it's not about the food, it's about the fix, to fix the yeah. feelings, to fix the soul. So when I saw that wow. un, when I saw that wow, untorn top and could hear the sound it would make when I do that, as I did in Vlogmas, I just put it back in and I sat over there and I just sat still for a bit because I just, I just, I just, it's, I'm in a really bad place around, around body image. I mean, absolute mess. So, yeah, any, anyway, so I just think it's really important to hear that. It's really important to talk about it. Thank and I just think that, that, oh, God, I mean, sorry to bring the and mood down. And you know down. what? For people, for people that um, don't have any of these issues, what we've just talked about will feel okay. like double dutch. It's so un understandable. I've had years of this where I've spoken on Loose Women. And in the meetings, when they're just, you know, when we're chatting about whatever, and then we they make a decision on what we would chat about or, or not, you know, I can look around the room and there's these utterly blank faces looking. <laughs> I tell you, to, to, over the last twenty five years, on and off, and 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 at one point there was no discussion about whether food could be, we could be anything about this. It's just greed. There are greedy people and there are non greedy mm -hmm. people. So we have moved on a lot, but there's still a long way to go. Can I just read this out? It's very yeah. sweet. Jude Lake. I was going to pop it on the screen, but given that you're a silent sub, I won't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm a silent sub. I've never posted anything before. But after oh, hearing Mark, hello. I want to say I am really struggling with this right now. Jude, sending you so much love. It's horrible, isn't it? It really is. Well, hopefully just by hearing, you know, the, 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 the reflecting back and sharing, you, at least you won't feel you're rattling around in your own head going mad because you're if not. If you're at home you're today and you haven't got a lot on, check out Overeaters Anonymous online and listen to some of the stories there because it will soothe, it will help, it will make a difference. Hmm. Okay, guys. All right. Um, let's talk briefly about the uh, rust shoot, the Alec Baldwin film set. Um, this was the film set. We, took, we covered it a lot in coffee uh, in Whitley Rushes. Um, there have been many, many different sort of civil cases. This is a criminal case brought by New Mexico. Uh, this is the tragic shooting, accidental shooting. I mean, you know, the point to remember about this, no one in any way intentionally wanted Helena Hutchins, the cinematographer, shot. Uh, but this has rumbled on for quite a while now, quite a few years. Um, and uh, I think there's been a sort of you know, I think that, you know, we, there's so many weird aspects to this that kind of make sense and don't make sense. She does have family. She sorry, did, sorry, I was in a bit of a, because I was still feeling Helena, that. this is the I Helena Hutchins cinematographer us. shooting. Yes, of the, yeah, to yeah. absolutely tragic. Okay. Remember at the time it was so, oh God. Absolutely. And there's been, a lot has been made of who was, who was not taking the responsibility seriously, where there was neglect on set, where protocols being observed and these are important things of course they are because someone tragically died now, and a husband and a, a young child reeling yeah. from that can you imagine the shock of that and then now it, this, this has gone on forever this criminal case and there's a yeah. there's one later in the year with alec baldwin likewise for um uh what's it called man not an uh, uh, no, involuntary manslaughter. manslaughter um 
And this what is, does that mean? Because invol- I just thought manslaughter meant you've done something by accident. But involuntary manslaughter. I think it's an like, even more distant thing. It's like almost. It's almost like right. institutional an manslaughter. An accident. Mm, not just an accident, because I mean, a lot of what was said about this film set was that she was playing fast, and I mean, the suggestion yes. is that she was playing it was, fast. It was and neglect loose and neglect, right, yes. and 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 a culture. You know, we've talked a lot about cultures in, in the media. I remember, a culture of irresponsibility mm, and sort of. I remember know. at the time people were working unbelievably long hours the hotel was miles from the set they were driving yeah. back and forth like every single production you've yeah and there was so much on. made of that and we were all like anyone in the business was like yeah like always mm. i did a film years ago where the turnaround was six hours exactly so i mean that's not to make a talk like that in no way it's not no we're not making light of it we're saying it's terrible this is yeah. this happens very often so I yeah. think there was a feeling that this was done and dusted, but New Mexico, the state, wants someone to be answerable. And I kind of understand what they're saying. They want some acknowledgement of where things went wrong and who is, who is responsible somewhere in this for someone dying who shouldn't have died. You know, can an accident genuinely happen if all protocols are being observed? Well, the have ar- the family driven much of this? Well, they- the, she has much, her, I think it's Ukrainian, her extended family, she was slightly estranged from in real oh. life, in, in real life, in a, in, when she was alive anyway. So there's a, there's a bit of a dubious question there. Right. Her husband is, and this is the weird detail, is a producer and is working with Alec Baldwin on the resurrected shoot of Rust, which they're still trying to make, and they're making in tribute huh? to Helena Hutchins. So this is, oh. cur- yeah, 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 yeah. They've re- remounted the shoot. Oh. So there's this curious idea that they all wanted to plow on with the project. They want to keep the film going. The husband is involved as a producer. They're wanting to do it in memory. They want to use some of the footage that she used. And that's in conjunction with that. He wasn't Baldwin. a producer initially, though. No, this no, is... no. Oh, wow. So in a weird okay. way, that's in sort of tribute yeah. or, or in remembrance. So this has happened. In pra- so this is very much the state of New Mexico that have brought this, despite, in a way, you could argue, out of court, all parties having found a sort of fragile piece of some mm. sort with it all, if you know what I mean. Um, but anyway, no, so the moment that the... Now, a lot of the focus sat with the armourer and the armourer, armoury, weaponry, about live bullets, about shooting ranges at the back of shot. A lot will be made in the Alec Baldwin uh, uh, court case coming up in, I think, about three months, about how lackadaisical and playful he was with the gun. You know, there's I've seen photographs and suggestions that perhaps he was being a bit too show-offy possibly. All these things speak to a lack of protocols and responsibilities on the set. But this is the moment that this young girl... Now, it is tragic what's happened to her, but it's more tragic what happened to Helena Hutchins. And, um, you know, this young woman, this is the moment she was kind of given her... uh, the, the judge, they haven't given her sentence yet, but this was. Defendant Hannah Gutierrez, guilty of involuntary manslaughter as charged in count one. Breaking news in the deadly Rust movie set shooting. A jury late this afternoon convicted movie armorer Hannah Gutierrez Reed of involuntary manslaughter. Prosecutors argue that she was negligent, careless, and thoughtless leading up to the death of cinematographer Helena Hutchins. Gutierrez Reed was found not guilty of evidence tampering. Actor Alec Baldwin is awaiting trial on involuntary manslaughter charge. He- now, what will be worrying for Alec Baldwin is the fact that this has gone this way. It doesn't look good for him. Now, she faces a potential maximum sentence of three years in prison. Um, her, there was footage of her mum elsewhere deeply distressed. Because, I mean... But, but the thing is, it, what, I, it, correct me if I'm wrong, wasn't there some criticism that she'd been given this job? She wasn't ready for it. Absolutely. So, and so I really, do, I really do feel for her because Ooh. she didn't go out that day wanting to do anyone no, any harm. No one did, neither and, did Alec Baldwin. And in our business, people can be very quickly promoted to jobs that they're not ready for, but because they're going to be cheaper, because mm. they're more junior. Mm. So I just, everything that she's gone through is, will already be so horrific. What, what good will it do to put her in prison? Well, and, yeah, and also, I mean, I think you're, you're absolutely right. She was, as Kimberly Jones said, she was doing three jobs on set, stretch budget, etc. This is the importance of protocol around these kind of things. Is like you've got to cut your cloth according to what the budget is. And I think one of the problems for, um, I don't think Alec Baldwin will be found even for involuntary manslaughter. It won't be about his handling of the gun. He was a producer. And I think the where this will all sit is with where the production team cut corners, 
uh, uh, you know, piled too many responsibilities on her and essentially compromised her ability. And I, I, I'd have thought, um, you know, if, if she had a really strong or the ability to kind of appeal, I'd, I'd have thought she would appeal against whatever the sentence is coming mm. for the producers. Do you know and I mean, you know, to make it more, more, more local. I don't think he will, Elspeth. I just but I think, think I do feel possible. sorry for younger people that are given chances yes. that they yeah. think yeah. are chances. And then, and it's actually, you know, often for monetary reasons yeah. within, and it's, you know, who should be held responsible? I just, I don't know. I think she'll have suffered an awful lot and will do for the rest of her life. Yeah, absolutely. I, I really hope she doesn't go to prison. Okay, so this other story is schools are snooping on um, secondary schools. Wait for are, this, guys. Secondary schools are snooping on uh, t- uh, homes. They, they, I think you should just play the video in this. Well, yeah, I, could you just fill us in a bit? Because I, I realise okay. I haven't quite got the story, haven't quite got the video up. For okay, some reason, so, so this is it. this is um, a head a headmaster of a school, and. When you see the video, you'll see, because when I was just reading it, I thought, oh, God, could this be somebody that is just really, really does care about the kids? Mm. Very, very yeah. um, because basically he talks about too often um, people will say that they're ill when actually they've gone on holiday. Okay, I've got so, them now. So shall we, go, shall we hand it over to him? So here you go. Talk about attendance, which is really important to help your child learn but then earn later in life. And I'm reporting this week record attendance at Australia Academy Woodfields. But I'm also noticing some families that are making choices that are not helping your child succeed or gain the benefits of social and emotional connections that you gain at school with staff and with peers. For example, there are some holidays during term time and there are holidays that are happening leading up to Easter. And what parents are doing is they're saying it's an illness, but actually the car is now no longer in the drive. The bins are no longer moving around the house and there's no activity in the house over a few days. So we're putting this down as an unauthorised holiday and we're issuing a fine. There's a scam that parents have engaged in where they've changed the name on the number of the phone to say doctor surgery. It isn't the doctors calling us. We know that this is a scam. So it's an unauthorised absence. We're also noticing an increase in parents trying to collect their child in the school day to go to the pharmacy. The pharmacy is open outside of school hours. This is disrupting education. And the thing is, we don't miss a second. Every single second is well used here in this school. We don't show videos. We don't waste time. So therefore, it's important that every every moment and every day a child is engaged in learning in school. So let's engage with school. Let's work with us so that we can succeed and we can go to university or a real alternative. <laughs> I'm here to talk about... Oh, Dina. Oh, Dina's in. Dina, yeah. what do you reckon? <laughs> So they're going to check, hang on, so checking bins. bins. Come on, I, I just want to hear what people yeah, think. No, Let's show to, some of their comments. But also, I just want to say, the, the first thing I thought when I watched that was, it, if he was my teacher, I wouldn't be in school ever. He's so boring. So boring. I'd be like this. Uh, <laughs> I wonder if he does, I wonder if he teaches geography yeah, or double What are you maths. doing this Saturday? <laughs> um, uh, right, for me. He's a joy, isn't he, says Carla Hatchman. Total jobs. Yeah, Carla, he's a joy. Total oh, hey Edmondson. jobs worth. I'll have to watch this. I think I'll be homeschooling my kids. <laughs> oh my god, that is everything that riles us up about the education oh my system. God. It's it's just it's it, it, it what and we know. Let me run in the and I'm putting in the doctor's <sighs> surgery. Do you know what? Oh. I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> no. that was, wow, God, some guys. <laughs> So hang on, so what was he saying? So people were changing the number of I quite get it, but people are pretending that their doctor's ringing up. No. Oh, no. 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 I'll tell you what what I heard on the radio yesterday. Someone rang in about this yesterday. No wasted time. Exactly, Erin. Ha ha, no wasted time I asked. Half of school is a wasted time. Precisely. Not a single second is wasted at School Fields Australia. Karen Rogers, schools are judged on people's attendance and achievement. It's a fair, fair point. I mean, look, look, we're not what we're not recommending is that you take your kids. We're not sit, sitting there advocating total revolution. But what, <laughs> I, what I do think is 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 odd is that this feels like a really, I think, really intrusive way. How, I don't see how a punitive cars way and of dealing with uh, situations because. But surely, have, have they got time? I keep hearing there isn't time. When for he anything. says, when he says, and um, we will issue a fine. 
you don't issue a fine. No. It's not you that issues a fine. And I, 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 I am very, very against fining parents. I think it's horrendous to find parents. I think, I think that often, not talking about people that are, you know, going off on holidays every, you know, if every time you're going off early holiday, it's not fair because it's not fair on the other parents as well that are paying the full price for the holidays. But there are some people that have chaotic lives and are struggling, and the last thing that they need is a bloody fine. Can you imagine if you had anything you were really struggling with? Yeah, look, and you had Gloria Chess, some kids should be in school, way too many, but bunk off. I t- totally agree. I mean, obviously, we are not recommending that, that kids shouldn't go to school, Gloria. But I, I, I'm, we're drawing a line on going to check people's drive to see if their car is in and whether the bins have been taken out and whether the lights are on. I think I that is, a, I think that is crossing a boundary. I, I, do, I do too. And I really do too. Yeah. I, I don't know. I feel that if there's the time to do that, isn't there the time to be more creative about making school more pleasurable? For instance, right? When the kids were younger and I was really, maybe if I'd been really ill, I might have stayed with my mum while she was looking after the kids. Mm. You do, you can't, you know, you can't have vigilantes. There are, there are, you know, there are teachers, there are traffic wardens, there are police officers, and you can't just cross over into a job that isn't yours. And I oh, think yeah. going to gain evidence at somebody's hat, I think, is crossing the line. Elsa Bott makes a really good sort of corollary hit point here. But corollary, that's what makes like. Yeah, yeah. In so, in so, well, alongside. But schools should tackle their bullying problem that they ignore. Yet rather than getting smart on this, why not get smart on dealing with all the low-level and high-level and micro-bullying that is destroying the experience of school for and so many kids? And also children that may be living in, in, in a maybe more chaotic background because listen if somebody's just going to keep going off that's on holiday they're going to pay the fine and that's fine it, are you really serving who are you serving this is interesting Sharon Goods I doubt they're checking it will be community feedback nosy neighbors you see all of this nosy neighbors I don't stuff, like that it takes either. us back to the to, to lockdown with people poking their nose yeah. over your fence and and skewing evidence that. and skewing kind of you know so you'll get someone whose parents don't like someone else about oh yeah well I saw that they yeah. had something in their drive and oh I tell you in what. a way that's even worse because then what it is, it's like somebody might ring the school and say, well, I tell you what, their car wasn't there all week. Not winning mm. that bin. And the bins. And then and then what? Schools across the country can then t- use that as evidence and then give out Imagine going into the, t- into the teacher's staff room. You're not going to believe it. What? Dean, I want to know gonna, what You're not going to believe it. What, Johnny? Johnny, you're not going to believe what's going on in Johnny's. Their lights were off. They're not recycling plastics. <laughs> <laughs> not a single bloody bottle out there. Loads of bottles. You know what that means. You, you know, know what, what the bottles were. To? There were six empty bottles of wine. Six what kind of parents of are they? Yeah, yeah. See, see, it's when we just get like easy about these things exactly. that then more and more encroachment happens. So this might seem a bit like sin, and as Mark said and said a number of times, we are not encouraging people to take their kids out of school. Take them out of school now! Not at all. But I think, <laughs> and this guy is probably one in, one in a million, who knows. But, but I think the, if he's putting it out on TikTok and he's putting it out in public... Yeah, propping it on should, the table. Propping it on the table. We should have our opinions on it. And our opinions are, that is the beginning of a, of a, a slidey road. It's the thin end of the wedge. And also you're going to get things like, you know, you know, teacher comes in and goes, have you seen little Sally? How many, how much yeah. Frosties her parents are buying? And what, Boxes well, of they Frosties do, in they a they paper do. box. Yeah. Or, or it's the wine bottles. <gasps> All that one. Yes, no wonder little Johnny's homework wasn't in properly on Monday morning because as I walked past Mr. and Mrs. Scroggins' house, not only did I notice six empty bottles of wine, but there was a half bottle of gin empty in there as well. And they were obviously drunk all weekend and didn't help little Johnny do his homework. And the car had been reverse parked into the living room. Good God. <laughs> Get I mean, out your fine book. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Where's yeah. Dina? Did she not have a comment on this? Yeah, she, she did. Got... She said it was hysterical. <laughs> she's, she's won a few words there, Dina. She just says it straight. Hit <laughs> wrong person to pick on. Oh, look. Oh, no. Frosty's the sugar rush, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just madness. It's all madness. Yeah. Can you imagine if you got a phone call saying, listen, little Johnny was running around like a lunatic all day. And yeah. before you say anything, Mrs. Scroggins, we know exactly why this happened because we witnessed the sugar puffs. In your recycling box. Yeah. 
By the way, where do you still buy Kiora from? Because they're really nice. No, That's what I'd say. I've made myself fancy. Shoes. I really want yeah. Frosties. Really want Frosties. It's got a talk- weird, like, yeah. extra taste you get in your nose with sugar puffs. Okay. And finally, let's move on to what. Oh, what, I thought we were at our final. Uh, yeah, well, uh, it's not a lot to say. Fern Britain, we, we didn't watch uh, Good, uh, Good Morning Britain last night. No, okay. we didn't watch Celebrity Big right. Brother. But Celebrity- Fern Britain has said what? So I, we didn't watch it. So we were a bit of firefighting situation in our whole lives yesterday. So we missed it. We will be back on the Big Brother train, though. Um, yes, uh, Gary, Kate's uncle. I love the way we all as a Fern, nation now call him Gary. Gaza said to Fern, oh, so what he's about a saucy, Philip? Really. Uh, Rumour is uh, he's coming in. And she went, really? <sighs> well, he's not here now, is he? And he went, yeah, but I suppose he could come in later. She says, and I think that would be the point that I would leave. Oh, nah, yeah. if that doesn't say a thousand words, I don't know what does. Here's a question. If Philip Schofield comes into the Big Brother house, will you, is that, would that be, would you consider that a good move for, for the programme? Not, not, it would just park to the side, all the NDAs and no one could talk about anything and everyone's spoken well, about the everything. Well, the NDA, to talk about. the NDA is a fascinating thing, isn't it? Well, the NDA is, a, is, a, is such a fascinating thing because his whole thing was, there aren't any NDAs, did his interview Biggest NDA in the history of NDAs, and boom, no one can talk about it. So he did his interview first and said there was no pay, non disclosure. Which, strictly contract, speaking, was true at that point. Which was true. Yeah. But then. But then the NDA was put in place for both of them. So neither of them can ever talk about it ever again. I wonder who, who enacts that. If, say, so you can say, say, this it. Per, per, say someone <laughs> does talk about it, do they send sort of like a That's, Schofield bailiff? Well, you get sued. By but the, but, but the thing through. is, it's so funny that you would think that you just say it in the interview. It just didn't make much of that. Didn't get out much, did it? It's weird. But anyway, so he will. <laughs> I can tell everything. you this right here and right now. Ellis. He will not be going into the Big Brother house. Right. No way. Why would why would they why would they do that and risk that? So I think she probably feels pretty sad. But she did look terrified. <laughs> Because <laughs> that's the thing with Big Brother. You don't know the time. You don't know whether it's day or night. You, or you're, everything's been stripped away from you. So you start to believe that anything could happen. <laughs> I remember once they put a party on for us, all right? Mm-hmm. And we came out and we were all like this. We were all like, yeah. And they, went, and they came over and they went, this is a party? It is. And we were like, no, no, it's not. What's going to happen? What's going to happen? And it got to the point where they were literally, the producers going, this is an actual, this is for you. We didn't want to touch the food. We didn't want to dance because we didn't believe it. But it was actually a party. Right. You get like this Stockholm syndrome where you don't believe anything. Um, I, t- I tell you what, I think Rachel Greenwood says, I, Rachel, Rachel Greenwood says, get him in. My line on it would be this. I would have to, you can't walk, bear watching oh, car crashes. Watch oh would my God, I, ha- I would have to watch because I'd want to watch an extraordinary close up. His toe curling vaping, uh, the way he just the You're way not he vapes. To vape, you know. No, I know, but he'd vape outside, wouldn't he? Be outside vaping, making sure he's vaping on the coolest vape ever, because that for some reason is, is speaks for everything. I just want the toe curling awkwardness of it all. I really do. I love the toe curling awkwardness. Wow. Um, but anyway, so finally, moving to much more serious matters, I just want to say Israel, the government of Israel, are starving a nation. It's as simple as, as that. that. And. And they're not starving go because to they're the multiple charity organizations that are stating that over and over again. Look on social media at the miles of trucks that are waiting on the border filled with food and nappies and baby wipes and all the things they desperately need. Sanitary towels. Imagine all the women, no sanitary towels. Feminist groups, where are you? Um and sanitary products are on an official list that the Israeli authorities are disallowing. Disallowing. In. This is this is pernicious. This is vindictive. This is humiliating. This is a slow level destruction of a people that because it feels like it's the smaller things in trucks and da-da, it's so spiteful. It 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 beggars belief. And right down to the fact and that remember, even senators being stripped of your home first. I always say this. Think about when it's cold and it's wet and you're hungry and you're tired. And let's add to it period pains, right? And you get home and you realise you haven't got your key. And you might have to wait an hour. There's nowhere you can go. The calf's closed. Your neighbours aren't in. And you just got to wait. And, and that frustration and that panic and that misery that comes in. You want to get in. You want to plug your phone. You want a cup of tea. You want a piece of toast. Imagine that six, seven times, and now you've been pushed right down to the end of your country and you have nothing. 
nothing of your things, nothing, and you're being starved. Further dehumanisation and gender persecution is a perfect description of what's going on. And don't be lulled into. Greg J. Stoker is very good on uh, Instagram, former uh, Marine or a member of the oh, American Armed Forces. Person. He talked about he so he takes no bullshit and he he sees through the shit as we all do, but he just puts it in such a sort of splenetic way. He's like, rah, rah, rah. and 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 he as he put it, he said, "Don't be hoodwinked by America's aid drops. This is Hollywood." It's like he said, That's Egypt, really good... he said it about Egypt and America. He said, don't be lulled into this idea. Wow, they're doing airdrops. So he said, this is them engaging in Hollywood nonsense. And I just want to very quickly play you this by a senator in America. And until the Netanyahu government allows more relief into Gaza, the President yes. Biden needs to invoke Section 620I of the Foreign Assistance Act. Madam President, here's the exact language of that section of the Foreign Assistance Act. It's an American senator. Quote, no assistance shall be furnished under this chapter of the Arms Export Control Act to any country when it is made, no, made known to the president that the government of such country prohibits or otherwise restricts directly or indirectly the transport or delivery of United States humanitarian assistance. Now, about three weeks ago, I asked senior State Department officials to tell me why this law, Section 628I of the Foreign Assistance Act, has not been applied. Tell me how it's not the case that Prime Minister Netanyahu is not restricting directly or indirectly the transport or delivery of United States humanitarian assistance when we have the humanitarian horror show that I just mentioned. Well, I haven't gotten an answer to the question I posed about three weeks ago. And the answer, Madam President, is there is no good answer to that question. And can I just say quickly as well, if I have to watch that ex specimen of an excuse for, for a, a, a White House representative standing superciliously on his podium saying that every single atrocity he, they have called upon Israel to investigate and we are awaiting a report. The journalists are demonstrating that are probing them on this, you know, the, the kind of the journalists that aren't propping up the kind of fake narratives. Um, there are many journalists in that White House kind of press room who are keep pushing back going, okay, you've said this now for four weeks. What's your protocol for when you get that answer back? Do you go back to them and get the answer back? They can't answer. They aren't asking anything. They aren't asking anything. They, this is an unforgivable shit show where any move in the so-called right direction is about the Democrats or the Labour Party trying to win elections. This has got zero to do with what the right thing to do is. Still, Still, they can't call for an immediate ceasefire. And everyone will be pushing this idea that it's up to Hamas and it's up to this and it's up to that. Everyone keeps saying there was a ceasefire in place before. I'm going to be uploading something onto the channel. Five minutes of the seven key lies that the West are promoting around the, the entire Israel-Gaza crisis. And one of them is this idea that there was a ceasefire already in place. Absolute nonsense. It's just, this is shocking. This is shocking. And unforgivable. It's shocking. I just, every day we wake up and we just can't believe it's continuing for another day and another yeah. day and another day. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Remember, please sign the, sign the um, petition for Hannah's drug and other women and men's who, who lives who could be saved if this drug was brought well, in. Well, not saved. But, well, yeah, prolonged, prolonged and eased. And, yeah. Um, the link is beneath here. If we can, as Nadia says, if you can get to 100,000, it can be brought up in the House of Commons. Be a part of that. Absolutely. Um, guys, uh, you've got more fun landing in vlog, vlog, vlog land. You've got loads of content coming. So um, we're going to now sit here and wave. <laughs>